Hi, I am Dr. Julie Brown, your trained concussion doctor and board certified chiropractic neurologist. Today I'm going to talk about another paper titled Linoleic Acid, Good or Bad for the Brain, which came out in 2020. And before that, I want to suggest that you go Google Dr. Paul Saladino, Dr. Kate Shanahan, Tucker Goodrich, and uh, Tommy Wood. All of these people understand what I'm going to talk about at a much greater detail, and they have really been the ones that have inspired me to go down this road. So before we begin, understanding linoleic acid is an omega-6, meaning that it has double bonds, which are inherently unstable, whereas saturated fats have single bonds, which are more stable. So this paper looks at the effects of linoleic acid omega-6 on the brain compared to the oxalams, which are the oxidized metabolites of linoleic acid. And they do these in different studies. They went back and looked at the literature in, in chicks, rodents, and humans. So to understand this paper reference that we've had an increase in linoleic acid from vegetable oils in our diet from 1930s, from the 1930s and to today, it was a four to one ratio and now is a 20 to one ratio, omega-3 to omega-6, which is a big jump. And we have known since the 1950s to the 1970s, when they did chick studies, they would test soybean oil diet without vitamin E and they observed an increase in necrosis, microvascular abnormalities, edema, and encephalomalacia in these chicks. So vitamin E is important to this because it helps stabilize oxidation or these uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, linoleic acid, that are not stable. So this study I found very interesting. They did kind of a two-generation study. They took hens and they fed them either 4% soybean oil or 4% tallow and then they did 4% soybean oil with vitamin E and 4% uh, tallow with vitamin E. And what they found is the eggs in the tallow fed group had less linoleic acid. Then they took these eggs, some of them, they had them grow and produce and hatch, and then they fed these chicks the ox lamb from safflower oil and produced um, encephalomalacia within 31 days. But what was interesting is they found the chicks that came from the hens that were fed the soybean oil without the vitamin E had a much greater increase in ataxia and mortality compared to the hens fed soybean oil and vitamin E or tallow. And they also found, not in this study, but in a different study, they found that oxlams were created or, or related to blood coagulation in the brain's vas vasculature. This study also had many other chick studies. I'd highly recommend looking them up. It's more than I want to do for this video, but very interesting. When we looked at rodents, they found that a decrease in linoleic acid with an increase in EPA and DHA, which are your omega-3s from fish oil, they showed a decrease in neuroinflammation. And in a study, they gave pure linoleic acid to one group versus the oxidized metabolites. And they found that the oxidized metabolites were not really absorbed. And really they're created from linoleic acid in the brain. And when the rodents would suffer a, an ischemic attack in the brain, they found an increase in oxalam. When we look at human studies, Paul Saladino does a really great job of this, talking about epidemiological studies. They're not great, they're surveys. Many of my patients can't remember what they ate the day before, let alone what they ate for a year, and then we correlate them to health issues. Not, not really great. So when they just look at these epidemiological studies, in, they have found pros and cons to this linoleic acid. We, it's hard to do controlled studies on humans. Uh, it's not really ethical, so we have a challenge with that. This was, this next one I'm going to talk about though, was an interventional study for 12 weeks where they had migraineurs decrease their linoleic acid and increase their EPA and DHA, so swapping that ratio again, and they had a decrease in their symptoms, but when they compared it to just decreasing linoleic acid or just increasing EPHA or e EPA or DHA, there was not a change. So the thing that stands out to me is Kate Shanahan has talked about the difference between a serum um, fatty acid profile versus a fat biopsy fatty acid profile. This is, the fat is longer and she said that it takes about two years for those PUFAs to get out of the fat cells. 
So I'd be curious if we looked at biopsies on these migraineurs, what the difference would be. Finally, the most startling for me is related to breast milk because so, the, the mom creates linoleic acid in the breast milk and it's going to be based on how they get it in their diet. From 1970 to 2000, it jumped from 7% to 12% found in the breast milk, which is four to eight times what is necessary for an infant. This first study was not interventional at all. They just looked at um, breast milk in moms and with an increase in linoleic acid and they found that it was associated with a decreased motor skill deficit in ages two to three and those that same group by age five had a decrease in verbal IQ and they said this was similar to babies that were not breastfed um, and when I say that what that means is if you're not breastfed you're getting milk somewhere and if you go read the labels many of them have corn and soy which are going to be high in linoleic acid. Another breast milk study found that infants that were fed breast milk high in linoleic acid, at 15 years of age, they had a decreased IQ, and then a maternal diet, meaning the mom's diet where the baby is in utero, that is high in linoleic acid, had a higher correlation with um, kids at, that had autism diagnosed by age six. Now, with those studies, you can question what was, what was a child's diet after the breast milk. Another way you could question is, what if they improved their diet? Would it, would it mitigate some of these findings? What if their diet got worse? Does that make the findings worse? I don't know. Those would be the questions, but again, not controlled studies. We know that corn and soy are subsidized by the government to really feed our farm animals, but then they have this waste and give it to us as oil. And if you want to know more about that, go to Sacred Cow or um, to watch the movie or buy the book. There's more books out there, but that would be the first place to start. Um, I have come across this in question in my master's program. Do my concussion patients present differently based on their fatty acid profile? Can I help them get better faster based on their fatty acid profile? I really question this. Um, and then the other thing is, as I'm reading these papers, these rats, these rat studies are fed rat chow. And you have to hunt to find out what they're fed and they'll reference a high saturated fat diet in, these, in this rat chow. And when you go look, they say they added corn oil, which is high linoleic acid, which is inherently not a saturated fat. So it is a little frustrating based on how we keep building our uh, education based on maybe not necessarily great studies. Also, if you are a vegan or a vegetarian and you, and you think that animal rights are a thing, which I agree, understand every time you go to a medical doctor, the stuff that they know is based usually on animal studies. So they are being affected somehow. I say do things humanely and buy regenerative if you have to, if you can. If not, I still buy red meat from the grocery store. If you have any questions, let me know. If you'd like to subscribe, the link's below and I'll reference paper below also. Thanks.